This video was sponsored by my own line of anime and D&D homebrew packs. Hey, it's sequel month, and you know what that means? Simply put, I'm taking a lot of my most popular videos and adding a lot more flavor to them. Last week was my retake on cooking chickens with fireballs, and today we have what your favorite D&D race says about you, part two. If you somehow haven't already, which I highly doubt, you should go watch the first video and then come back to this one, but it's not required. Anyway, to properly end this series, let's go off with a bang. Hope you'll enjoy. Dragonborn. You heard the word dragon in the name and were immediately hooked to this race. When you found out they couldn't fly, let's just say you were a little more than heartbroken. Dwarf. You can actually remember most of the cool features that dwarves get. Plus, you like doing funny voices for dwarf characters. It's just too hilarious. Elf. You had no real friends until you were an adult. You also either hate high elves or love them. There is no middle ground here. Gnome. You love the plus two intelligence that this race gets a little too much. Fireball is your most frequently learned spell, and everyone at the table thinks you're a little annoying. Half-Elf. Odds are that your elven parent hates you, and your human parent loves and wants to protect you. Every time a charm spell fails to work, you can't help but be grateful for your elven blood. Halfling. You watch The Hobbit, and now you're here. As a veteran player, you know all too well why you keep making halfling characters. You can't live without that lucky feature, can you? Half-Orc. You know just how brutal the early levels of D&D can be, and love half-orcs for their ability to never die. Survey says you also love the barbarian class. Human. You heard the joke calling humans normies way too often, but you're the one laughing at everyone else. You know the unlimited potential that humans possess. If you like standard humans though, then you just enjoy stat numbers. Tiefling. You love playing seductively charming characters. Also, this is your favorite flag. Leonin. You were a chad in high school and enjoy scaring off wimpy goblins with your roar. You also don't have a reddit account. Satyr. You've been waiting for more races that would synergize well with bards and now you have it. The extra 5 feet of walking speed has somehow saved you multiple times. Arakokra. You actually know how to pronounce the name of this race. Whenever you're in a house, cramped dungeon, or anywhere with a low roof, you feel crippled. Genasi. You play D&D more for the fun and flavor of the game, and enjoy everything it has to offer, regardless on if it's meta or not. Because of that, your characters tend to actually be interesting. Goliath. You like imagining your characters rock-hard abs, shriveling arrowheads, and bending swords backwards. You also like being the tallest player in the party. Asimar. You tend to play the support characters in RPGs. Depending on the sub-race, you either get annoyed at selfish people or generous people really easily. Bugbear. You enjoy the pure wackiness of some races, like imagining a furry buff monster rushing out of the forest just to break someone's kneecaps. The absurd length of their limbs is also pretty funny. Fearbulg. You have multiple pets, a garden filled with thriving plants, and are vegan. People who disrespect nature will find themselves on your hit list. Goblin. You've wanted to punch someone in the groin so hard that they immediately die. It's just so hilariously morbid. You're also a min-maxer who chose the race just so they didn't have to put a level in Rogue. Hobgoblin. You're often the leader of projects and events, and like to show a good example when around your co-workers. Nobody wants to admit it, but they always appreciate you when you're around. Kenku. Thinking of an original character concept is pretty hard for you. You also tend to benefit from ideas that aren't yours, and keep an archive of character art and D&D maps saved on Pinterest. Kobold. You tend to draw art of your D&D characters, enjoy bright, vibrant colors, and like acting both helpless and murderous at the same time. It's also been a while since you've gone outside. Lizard Folk. You've always wondered what human flesh tastes like, and enjoy listening to your DM attempt to describe it. It's not just humans, though. Your character's gonna taste every type of meat on the planet before this campaign ends. Orc. You hate it when enemies are too far away to hit. Running straight through enemy lines is the only way to fight. Tabaxi. You've realized just how useful climbing can be, and are glad that nobody else has caught on to how much better it is over flight. You always laugh when DMs ban races with wings, but don't lay a finger on your claws. You also have an unhealthy sleep schedule. Triton. You're a bit too happy to hear that Tritons finally have dark vision. You love pretending to be Aquaman, and the incredible air and water spells you get definitely helps with that. You want to eat pure blood. Why is it that all the scariest D&D races are always the hottest? You like playing with people's emotions and only smile when you're trying to hide the pain. Tortle. No clue why, but you seem to have an unhealthy fascination with monkeys. You also live by the motto, there are no accidents. Changeling. You can't travel to a destination farther than an hour away without your suitcase filled to the brim with clothing and makeup. You'd also rather look like anyone but yourself. Kalishtar. You were attacked by a Mind Flayer and somehow didn't immediately die. Shifter. 
The lycanthropes were always super cool to you, but you didn't want to lose control over your character during every full moon. Warforged. Every day you wonder if today is going to be your last. You also have way too much free time. Gith. You're glad that the latest D&D video game had a lot of Gith representation. Maybe now DMs will finally give them the respect they deserve. Centaur. You're trying to maximize your walking speed and finally found the most consistent race for it. You've also been injured by a horse in real life and now want to trample everything you see in a fantasy world. Loxodon. You enjoy tea, speaking in a soft, low tone, and appreciate the small pleasures in life that each day brings. You might also like to crochet, read books, or make clay pottery. Minotaur. You play a lot of sports games and manage to win a few just because your opponents were too scared to get close. You also tend to hurt yourself and not even realize until hours later. Simic Hybrid. You heard that low-level D&D monsters give experience points and are secretly hoping to get your party on a fishing boat to start farming some crabs. Vidalkin. You're a pretty talented artist who's watching this video at 3am. Verdon. You thought The Office was a funny television show and wanted to recreate some of the wacky antics into D&D. Lokatha. Every time you join a new campaign, you're scared to make a Lokatha for fear that it'll just suffocate and die in the most anticlimactic way possible. Grung. You're secretly hoping that a DM finally lets you play this race so you can bask in all the incredible poison-based abilities it gets. Now, that sums up all the current D&D races, so now let's do some popular homebrew ones. Fairy. You've always wondered what a more useful version of Navi from The Legend of Zelda would be like. You're also still trying to imagine what getting hit by a sword feels like as an 8 inch tall creature. Undead. You wanted to play a race that could perfectly represent yourself in the game. That, or you're one of those dapper looking undead, and just like them for the goth aesthetic. Kimono Mimi. You liked all the abilities from the tabaxi, but didn't want to be completely covered in fur. Animal ears and tails are cute, and you can't deny that. Dragon. You wanted more dragon in your dragonborns. Your dungeon masters also have a lot of patience to go through the homebrew you send them. Succubus. You were so tired of devils manipulating your characters all the time that you decided to just do it yourself. It was also concerningly easy to find good character art online. Slime. So there's this one anime that not a whole lot of people know about, but you know the main character? Yeah, they're pretty cool. You also hated all those YouTube videos with kids playing with slime, but ironically do the same thing in D&D. Werewolf. You thought the shifter was cool, but needed more edges to your dark and brooding character design. Your party is also struggling to understand why they keep your character around. Arachnes. You wanted to be the living embodiment of Spider-Man. Some races can climb walls, well you can climb ceilings. Oni. Japanese folklore is just cool, okay? Orcs also weren't scary looking enough, so you went for the next best thing. Ghost. Sure, this one sort of belongs in the undead section, but it was popular enough to be its own category. You like mentally damaging your dungeon masters by cheesing through difficult dungeons, bailing when you don't want to deal with things, and abusing important NPCs. You're also very soft-spoken and get talked over in most conversations. And last but not least, Angel. You're new to Dungeons and Dragons, aren't you? And that's about all the popular races I could find. If you have a favorite that I didn't mention, or some extra race stereotypes that you know of, the comment section is your canvas, my friend. If you're new to the channel, smash the subscribe button before I disappear from your YouTube homepage forever. Thanks for watching, and if you'd like to play as some of the homebrew races I mentioned, definitely check out my anime into D&D packs. Every month comes new content for the game, like races, monsters, items, and more. The lowest tier gets you access to nearly an entire year's worth of materials. So if you're looking to spice up your next D&D character, check out the link down below. And with that said, I'll see you all in the next video.